Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell icon. RxOSLC Mary Cosby sues part of her own church for millions. As Mary Cosby triumphantly returns for season 5 of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, her infamous church is once again making headlines. RxOSLC star Mary Cosby was once accused of running a cult. When Bravo viewers were first introduced to the designer-clad preacher, they learned the odd way she took over the Faith Temple Pentecostal Church. Shortly after her grandmother, Rosemary Mama Redmond Cosby, died, Mary married her step-grandfather, Bishop Robert Cosby. She inherited a million-dollar estate that included multiple businesses and her position at the church podium. During the season one reunion, Andy Cohen questioned her over the cult allegations and brought up leaked audio from her sermons. In one, she is heard calling her congregation stingy and poor for not getting her enough birthday presents. Mary denied using the church to fund her extravagant lifestyle, but the accusations didn't end there. In season two, late Salt Lake City community leader Cameron Williams said unequivocally, Is it a cult? Yes. Does she call herself God? Yes. The cult storyline was so bad that she refused to attend the season two reunion and was not invited back to the show for the following season. Mary Cosby sues the for-profit arm of the Faith Temple, Pentecostal Church. After returning to the show as a friend for season four, Mary is back full-time for season five, but that is not the only reason people are talking about her. Mary and her husband recently filed suit against United Security Financial Inc., the for-profit business wholly owned by the church, and two of its officers, Annie L. Johnson and Sean Turner. The church, Mary and Robert, are seeking damages to the tune of $6.3 million. President of USF, Annie, and Secretary Sean are accused of intimidating USF employees, forging Robert Cosby's signature, and using funds from the church for personal expenses. The lawsuit describes multiple times the church was involved in mortgages and selling items like a church-owned radio station, apparently without Mary or Robert's knowledge. In the documents, Robert is listed as Faith Temple's bishop and president, and Mary as the church's vice president, first lady, and evangelist. In the snow-capped hills of Salt Lake City, a new kind of storm was brewing, and it wasn't the usual wintry blizzard. This storm came in the form of a legal battle, that had the city's socialites buzzing, and it all revolved around one of the most enigmatic stars of the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City, Mary Cosby. Known for her unconventional marriage, eccentric fashion choices, and infamous one-liners, Mary was now making headlines for something far more dramatic than a feud over dinner table insults. This time she was taking on her own church, suing part of it for millions. For years, Mary Cosby's life had been the subject of both fascination and confusion. As the First Lady of the Faith Temple Pentecostal Church, she inherited the church after her grandmother's passing, along with a controversial marriage to her step-grandfather, Bishop Robert Cosby Sr. The church was central to Mary's identity, not just as a religious leader, but also as a source of her immense wealth. Wealth that had always sparked rumors. From accusations of manipulating her congregation to fund her lavish lifestyle to whispers about financial mismanagement, Mary's relationship with her church was always a point of contention on and off screen. But now the drama had reached a fever pitch. According to court documents obtained by several outlets, Mary Cosby was suing a faction of her own church, claiming they had siphoned millions of dollars from her. In a plotline that could have easily been mistaken for the latest episode of Varacho SLC, the lawsuit alleged financial betrayal, greed, and a power struggle within the very institution she had once ruled with an iron hand and channel gloves. The lawsuit, a battle for control. The lawsuit was not just about money, it was about control. According to sources close to the case, a group of former church members had formed their own leadership circle, gradually seizing financial authority over several key church properties and accounts. Mary, who had always portrayed herself as the rightful heir to the church's throne, was livid when she discovered that millions of dollars in donations had allegedly been diverted into private ventures by these rogue members. In a fiery statement released through her attorneys, Mary claimed that this group had betrayed the sacred trust of the congregation and was using church resources for personal gain. She vowed to take back what was rightfully hers, declaring, 
I will not allow anyone to tarnish the legacy my grandmother built or misuse the funds intended for the Lord's work. The allegations were jaw-dropping. Luxury cars, extravagant vacations, and even real estate purchases allegedly made with church donations. It was as if a shadow version of Mary's own lifestyle had been operating behind the scenes, only this time without her approval. What made it even more scandalous was that these accusations were directed at people who had once been close to her, some of them trusted advisors and even family members. A house divided, the church responds. As news of the lawsuit spread, Faith Temple Pentecostal Church quickly became a house divided. Congregants were torn between loyalty to Mary and the rogue faction now accused of financial misconduct. Some members of the church viewed Mary's lawsuit as a righteous attempt to cleanse the institution of corruption, while others saw it as yet another display of her insatiable greed. One former church leader, who was named in the lawsuit, fired back publicly, claiming that Mary had neglected her responsibilities to the congregation for years. She has used the church as her personal piggy bank, they said in a heated interview. We stepped in to save the church from financial ruin after years of mismanagement and neglect. This lawsuit is just another way for her to maintain control over something she hasn't cared about in years. The battle lines were drawn and the fallout was immediate. Some churchgoers packed their bags and left, while others doubled down on their support for Mary, attending services in larger numbers than ever before. The Sunday sermons, once focused on spiritual growth, had turned into thinly veiled lectures about loyalty and betrayal. Tensions reached a boiling point when one particularly vocal church member was escorted out by security after publicly accusing Mary of exploiting the congregation. The whole scene felt like a reality show unfolding in real life, complete with the tears, drama, and awkward silences. Mary's media frenzy, the court of public opinion, as is often the case with housewives drama, the court of public opinion was just as important as the actual courtroom. Mary, always one to keep people guessing, went on a media blitz. She gave cryptic interviews where she spoke in riddles, referencing biblical passages and obscure parables to describe her betrayal. Even Judas was among the twelve, she said in one particularly memorable interview, her eyes welling up with tears. I trusted these people, and they sold me out for thirty pieces of silver. Our HOSLC fans couldn't get enough. Social media lit up with memes, tweets, and speculative threads. Was this lawsuit just a way for Mary to deflect from her own financial troubles? Was she truly the victim, or was this a strategic power play to maintain her hold over the church's fortune? Her castmates were just as divided. Some, like Heather Gay and Whitney Rose, seemed sympathetic, with Heather calling the lawsuit a heartbreaking reminder of how money can destroy even the most sacred of bonds. Others, like Lisa Barlow, were far more skeptical. Look, I'm not surprised, Lisa said during an episode confessional. Mary's always been about the money. This whole thing just proves what we've all known. Her relationship with the church is more about power than prayer. The fallout. What's next for Mary Cosby? As the lawsuit moved through the courts, the fate of Faith Temple Pentecostal Church hung in the balance. Would Mary reclaim her position as its sole leader, or would the rogue faction succeed in ousting her for good? And what about the millions of dollars allegedly at the center of this legal storm? One thing was for sure. Mary Cosby was not backing down. In a final, dramatic statement to the press, she made it clear that she would fight until the end. I have God on my side, she said, her voice filled with conviction. And no one, not even those I once trusted, can take that away from me.